Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In Zambia, the largest open pit copper mine is a sight to behold. Massive, heavy machinery dominates the landscape, tirelessly working to extract this valuable metal. The mining trucks used here are incredibly massive, carrying a whopping 150 tons of earth and minerals. To give you an idea of their weight, that's as heavy as 25 fully grown African elephants. Even more astonishing, some trucks weigh a staggering 260 tons, which is equal to the weight of 200 passenger cars. This immense operation highlights the importance of copper mining in Zambia's economy. In addition to open pit mining, the Lubombe mine in the Copperbelt region held the title of Zambia's largest underground mine in 2021. It produced around 1.47 million metric tons of run of mine material annually, with a primary focus on copper, reaching 38.98 thousand tons that year. It's important to note that the combined efforts of the five largest mines in Zambia, including the Sentinel Copper Mine, Kanzanshi Mine, Lumwana Copper Mine, Nichanga Copper Mine, and Mopani Mine, contributed significantly to the country's mining output. In 2021, they collectively produced approximately 138.76 million metric tons of run of mine material. After decades of dedicated exploration and more than two years of construction, Kamoa Copper is poised to initiate copper production with the commencement of the Kokula Concentrator's hot commissioning. The construction of the concentrator, a significant feat achieved amidst a global pandemic, took 18 months and involved components sourced from over 12 countries delivered in 2,485 truckloads. This endeavor marked several firsts for the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, including the use of the country's largest 400-ton crane for mill placement and the installation of the DRC's largest rougher flotation cells. Additionally, the high-pressure grinding rolls and Jameson flotation cells are the first of their kind in the DRC. As of 2022, the Kokula Concentrator boasts a current capacity of 3.8 million tons per annum, with plans to activate the second module in the third quarter of that year, doubling its capacity to 7.6 million tons per annum. Since May 2020, the mining team has been extracting and stockpiling high-grade copper ore, amassing more than 3.3 million tons of ore on the surface at an average grade of 4.87% copper, ready for processing. With over 9.5 million man-hours dedicated to constructing the plant and completing final testing and calibration, the run of mine ore is fed into the crushing and screening surface plant at a rate of 475 tons per hour. It is then prepared for the high-pressure grinding rolls, which crush the material into finer particles. The material undergoes two-stage milling to liberate the copper sulfide, setting the stage for the subsequent flotation processes. Once the mechanical processes are completed, the material enters the rougher scavenger flotation circuit. Reagents are introduced to the slurry, preparing it for the flotation process. The slurry is pumped to the flotation cells, where low-pressure blower air is introduced, causing the copper sulfide minerals to attach to air bubbles and float to the top of the flotation cell. Fast floating and liberated copper sulfide particles are recovered onto the rougher flotation concentrate then further upgraded in the high-grade cleaner flotation. Low-grade concentrate from the scavenger phase goes through scavenger cleaner flotation.
The reground concentrate moves to scavenger recleaner flotation, where reagents separate waste material from copper sulfide minerals. Scavenger recleaning concentrate is pumped to the final concentrate thickener. Both high grade and low grade copper concentrate move to the thickener, where the concentrate is dewatered for subsequent processing. Water is recovered for reuse, and the thickened slurry is pumped into the surge tank for efficient tailing storage. Around half of the tailings are pumped to the backfill plant to be used underground for maximizing mining extraction. The remaining tailings are directed to the tailing storage facility designed to meet international best practice standards and independently managed and monitored. The concentrate proceeds from the thickener plant to the concentrate filtration plant, where water is further removed to produce a dry filter cake. The filter cake is transferred to the concentrate loadout conveyor for bagging and loading. The Kokula concentrator's bagging facility can operate around the clock, handling over 500 bags of high-grade concentrate per day during phase one equivalent to approximately 30 truckloads daily. Some of these bags are transported to the local smelter for market. With the Kokula concentrator commissioned ahead of schedule and a substantial stockpile of high-grade ore on the surface, it is poised to achieve full production capacity and recovery soon. Construction of the second module is already underway, with commissioning expected in the third quarter of 2022. Many shared infrastructure components are completed setting the stage for Kamoa Copper to become one of the world's top copper producers, estimated to produce around 400,000 tons of copper annually from an estimated 7.6 million tons of ore. The commencement of ore processing in the Phase II milling circuit marks a significant milestone at the Kamoa Kakula mining site. This phase mirrors the Phase 1 concentrator plant, boasting a design throughput of 475 dry tons per hour, equivalent to 3.8 million tons annually. Notably, Phase 1 achieved commercial production just two months after the initiation of hot commissioning. Even more impressive, Phase 1 consistently outperformed its design capacity over the past three months, exceeding it by roughly 10% to 15%. Presently, the estimated copper concentrate production stands between 290,000 to 340,000 tons. In an effort to enhance processing capabilities, a debottlenecking program is in progress for both Phase 1 and 2, aimed at increasing capacity by over 20%. This will propel Kamoa Kakula to a position as the world's fourth largest copper producer, with an annual output surpassing 450,000 tons. Molten mat undergoes further treatment using overhead cranes for both molten and solid material handling. The molten slag, a byproduct of smelting, is left over, then readied for pouring and subsequent cooling to solidify it. Once cooled, the slag is prepared and organized into stockpiles for further use or disposal. Copper recycling is a crucial process with a rich history dating back to the early 1920s during World War II. Its significance has only grown, especially in the face of changing market dynamics and the increasing difficulty of sourcing virgin copper through mining. This process is essential for ensuring a sustainable supply of copper, especially given its vital role in electrical transmission and the electrification of transportation. One notable aspect of copper recycling is the reclamation of end-of-life electronics, or e-waste. As electronic devices become more prevalent in our daily lives, e-waste has become a significant concern. Recycling end-of-life electronics not only prevents them from ending up in landfills but also allows for the recovery of valuable metals, such as gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. The recycling process also takes advantage of world-class smelters and refineries, leveraging their billion-dollar assets and reducing the unit cost of recycling compared to dedicated recyclers. This efficient approach to recycling ensures a sustainable supply of copper while benefiting the environment and society. Copper can be extracted from both mined ore and recycled products. 
The following description outlines the refining and processing of copper at Glencore's Copper Refinery in Quebec, Canada, where copper is received with an average purity level of 98% and is refined to reach a purity level of 99.99%. The production process begins with the arrival of copper in the form of anodes, which are large plates weighing 340 kilograms each. These anodes may come from mining operations or recycling facilities. The incoming anodes are first weighed and sampled to assess their composition and quality. The plates of crude copper are then placed in large carriers and submerged in tanks filled with electrolyte. The electrolyte is typically a mixture of sulfuric acid and dissolved copper. Stainless steel sheets called mother blanks are also deposited in the tanks between each anode. These mother blanks act as a substrate for the electro refining process. Electro refining An electric current is applied activating the electro-refining process. During this process, pure copper dissolves from the anode and is deposited on the mother blank. This deposition results in the formation of a new copper plate of maximum purity, called a cathode. The anodes remain in the tank for approximately 21 days, while the cathodes are removed and replaced every seven days with new mother blanks. Some of the impurities from the anodes are deposited at the bottom of the tank as mud, while the remaining impurities dissolve in the electrolyte solution. Electro-refining cells. This electro-refining process takes place in 1,800 cells, divided into nine huge aisles within the facility. Final products. At the end of the refining cycle, three main products are derived. Cathodes. These are copper plates with high purity that have been stripped, washed, sampled, weighed, packaged, and labeled. They are sent to customers for use in various applications. Spent anodes. Spent anodes are melted down in a shaft furnace, number 8, allowing for the creation of new anodes and the recovery of their full value. Anode slime. This byproduct contains precious metals and impurities. It undergoes several preparation processes to extract the valuable metals. Treatment of anode slime. Anode slime is treated in autoclaves, pressure tanks, where copper, tellurium, and nickel are dissolved using acid and steam. The slime is then dried and transferred to a top-blown rotary converter. Precious metal extraction. The converter uses heat and oxygen to separate precious metals such as gold, silver, platinum, and palladium from other impurities like tellurium and selenium. The upcast process is a state-of-the-art method for producing top-quality copper rod and tube for a wide range of applications. This system is renowned for its simplicity, efficient operation, and advanced control features. It offers a high degree of customization to meet the unique requirements of each customer, with its core components including a furnace system and a casting machine. Additionally, a cathode and or recycled copper charging system and rod tube coilers are tailored to match the specific needs of each upcast line. Raw material. To ensure the production of high-quality oxygen-free CU of rod and tube, copper cathodes are the preferred choice for raw material. However, the upcast process can also utilize recycled copper scrap as the raw material provided that it meets purity requirements. When using recycled copper, it necessitates a longer dwell time in a melting furnace before the casting process begins. Therefore, it's recommended to use a separate melting furnace for copper scrap. The use of 100% recycled copper in the upcast casting process is feasible, but the purity and quality of the scrap material must be maintained to meet the desired output standards. Furnaces. The upcast process offers flexibility in furnace options, depending on the desired output capacity. All furnaces are electrically heated using channel inductors, which can be of single or double loop types. 
A steepless power supply and control system is the standard, which allows for smooth power adjustments, reducing energy consumption, extending the inductor's service life, and eliminating harmonic resonances in the inductor circuit. Single furnace configuration. This is recommended for casting capacities up to 12,000 tons per annum, TPA. It is a compact, open-top unit that combines the melting and casting functions into a single furnace. Double furnace line. Applicable for an output of up to 40,000 TPA, this system features separate melting and casting furnaces, enabling higher production rates and increased capacity. Triple furnace arrangement. The triple furnace configuration consists of two melting furnaces, separate ones for cathodes and recycled copper, and one casting furnace. It is the most suitable solution when both cathodes and recycled copper are used as raw materials, allowing for a high degree of flexibility and efficiency. Casting machine. Upcast casting machines are multi-strand systems, each equipped with individual coolers for every strand. The number of strands used depends on the desired output of the casting line. Coolers are fixed to the casting machine frame, located above either a combined furnace, for single furnace lines, or a casting furnace, for double and triple furnace lines. A servomotor-driven withdrawal system pulls the cast products upward through the coolers. Subsequently, the rod's tubes are guided to coilers, which are typically double coilers with two separate spools for rod or individual, more robust coilers for tube production. One of the remarkable features of the upcast process is the ability to cast different rod tube sizes simultaneously. This flexibility simplifies the process of changing from one product to another, which involves changing the coolers and adjusting the casting program in the computer-controlled servomotor drive system. Multiple drive systems can be integrated into the same frame, enabling the simultaneous casting of different rod tube sizes. Importantly, adding or removing coolers does not disrupt the ongoing casting of other strands, ensuring a high level of process availability. Furthermore, Daily adjustments to production output are straightforward, as they only require varying the number of operative strands. The Upcast SG tube continuous casting technology offers an innovative solution for producing thin walled copper tubes in heavy coils which are ready for further processing in tube drawing and annealing machines. This approach significantly reduces the number of costly steps required in conventional tube production. As a result, it not only offers cost efficiency but also greater flexibility and environmental friendliness. The Upcast SG tube line is also available in a hybrid alternative, providing an optimal solution for balancing capacity between copper cast rod and tube production. The production process of HME copper tubes, encompassing both Tech Tube and Sanko tubes, at the Menden production site is a sophisticated and well-coordinated series of steps that result in high-quality copper tubes suitable for a wide range of industrial and sanitary applications. The process commences with the arrival of copper billets, which serve as the raw material for these tubes. The initial step in the process involves cutting the copper billets to the desired size, ensuring uniformity in the material used for extrusion. Following this, the cut copper billets are passed through a gas-fired preheating furnace. This furnace plays a pivotal role in heating the billets to the appropriate temperature, rendering them more malleable and ready for the extrusion process. The heart of the operation lies in the 50-ton extrusion press, a powerful machine that subjects the preheated copper billets to immense pressure. 
The extrusion process encompasses several vital components, including the extrusion setup, billet introduction, upset operation, pressure relief measures, extrusion end position, back end sealing, and back end shearing. Each of these steps ensures that the copper is formed into tubes while any defective or waste portions are carefully discarded. Following the extrusion process, the copper tubes go through a cold drying operation, which refines their dimensions and improves their mechanical properties. This process is executed using a 30-ton drying bench. It involves various stages such as pointing the tube ends, initiating the drying process with a tube pusher and plug, using a die to control the drawing, and ultimately drawing the copper tube through a series of dies to achieve the desired dimensions and surface finish. Spinner blocks are specialized tools used in the cold drying process to enhance the efficiency and quality of the operation. These blocks consist of a set of rollers or discs that rotate as the tube is drawn through them. Efficient transport of the copper tubes that have undergone cold drying is achieved through a basket transport system. This system ensures that the tubes are handled with care and minimizes the risk of damage during transit. Once the drawing process is complete, the copper tubes are coiled into 600 kg level wound coils. An automatic guided vehicle system is employed for coiling, which guarantees precision and efficiency in this crucial step. The automatic guided vehicle system is a sophisticated automation technology that employs self-guided vehicles equipped with sensors and navigation systems to transport materials and products within a manufacturing or industrial setting. The final touch in the production process involves subjecting each batch of copper tubes to an individualized heat treatment furnace setup. This step is tailored to the specific requirements of the intended application and can significantly enhance the mechanical properties and durability of the copper tubes. The copper tubes produced at the Menden production site are distributed under two distinct brands, TechTube and Sanko, each catering to specific industrial sectors. TechTube, in particular, serves a wide range of industrial applications, including air conditioning, refrigeration, fittings production, water heating, solar thermal applications, and electrical applications. These tubes are often wrapped in plastic film, serving not only as protection but also as a means of identification. Sanko, a prominent brand under HME, specializes in producing top-quality plumbing tubes designed for a range of applications. Sanko's primary focus is on domestic plumbing and heating systems, making it an essential choice for residential installations. Additionally, the brand caters to sectors involving gas and liquefied gas, ensuring the safe and reliable transport of these critical resources. Copper scrap recycling is an essential part of sustainable resource management and has gained prominence as a profitable and environmentally responsible industry. One notable location for copper scrap recycling is on the outskirts of Milan, Italy, where a factory run by Continuous Property, CSPA, is at the forefront of designing and manufacturing equipment for producing non-ferrous commodities like copper rods and ingots. One of their remarkable achievements is the technology to transform copper scrap, even with controlled impurities, into clean copper. This process offers considerable profit potential by converting low-grade copper scrap into high-quality FRHC, fire-refined high-conductivity, copper. The process begins by loading 100% copper scrap with a copper content higher than 93-94%, to provided harmful impurities like nickel, tellurium, and silver remain within specified limits. The loaded scrap is transported to tiltable reverberatory refining furnaces, with capacities ranging from 40 to 250 tons. A recent innovation by continuous property allows loading from the top, 
enhancing thermal efficiency. Once the metal is ready, the continuous casting and rolling line commences operation. Liquid metal flows through a closed mold, with cast bars automatically handled by pressing rolls and conveyors. Rolling mills, operating in tandem, use vertical and horizontal forces to generate high reduction rates for proper copper rod internal structure. Environmental sustainability is a priority. The rolling mills are equipped with fume enclosures, and the calibration operations are easy and repeatable. Safety devices are in place to prevent cobble formation and to halt mill operations in case of any issues. After the finishing mill, the rod is water-cooled, passes through a state-of-the-art flaw detector, and is coiled in an automatic basket coiler. These coils meet the demands of various markets, providing copper wire for a wide range of applications. The capacity of the plant can vary from 8,000 to 80,000 tons per year, depending on the number of refining furnaces. The UVM drum twist stranding machine is used for creating cable and wire. This machine operates by twisting multiple wire strands together to form a single, cohesive cable. It consists of several key elements, a rotating drum, payoff stands, and a take-up system. Wire strands, often pre-insulated, are fed from payoff stands onto the rotating drum. The drum's rotation imparts a twist to the individual strands, which are carefully controlled to ensure the desired lay length and direction. The twist is essential to enhance the cable's flexibility and electrical properties. Once the stranding process is complete, the twisted cable is wound onto a take-up system, where it is spooled or coiled for further processing. The UVM drum twist stranding machine offers versatility by allowing adjustment of parameters such as stranding pitch, direction, and the number of strands, catering to various cable manufacturing requirements. The 2HI hot rolling mill for copper, brass, and aluminum slabs or plates is a versatile and cost-effective machine widely employed in various industries. This mill configuration is characterized by its simplicity and cost efficiency, making it an attractive choice for rolling applications. One notable advantage of two high rolling mills is their ability to accommodate a range of sizes. These mills are particularly suited for tasks like skin passing, where minimal reductions, usually around 1% to 2%, are required. This is especially useful for materials that exhibit non-uniform thickness across their width. To address this issue, some two high mills are equipped with roll bending mechanisms. Roll bending employs bearings located outside the main bearings to flex the rolls, compensating for material thickness variations and ensuring a more consistent product. For hot rolling, two high mills have an advantage over four high mills because their rolls are self-cleaning, reducing the frequency of roll replacement. This feature translates to cost savings and increased operational efficiency. When replacement is necessary, the rolls can be swiftly changed from the side of the mill. These mills find applications in a variety of industries, including pickle lines, galvanizing lines, and skin pass mills. Their large diameter rolls enable a substantial roll bite, making it possible to reduce materials in a single pass with significant reductions, as seen in the transformation of slabs into plates. This capability is especially valuable for soft materials like lead and copper. Additionally, 
Two high mills are employed in the rubber and plastic industries to enhance the shape of expanded or perforated metal. They can gently reduce materials, creating a flat and uniform surface. However, it's important to note that two high mills have limitations due to the flattening effect, which results from the large diameter of the rolls. This effect can restrict the extent of reduction achievable in a single pass. Manufacturing at non-ferrous metals rolling mill, Labetti, is a comprehensive and highly specialized process, driven by a century of experience and a commitment to producing top-quality non-ferrous metal products. The company's manufacturing activities are centered on copper and copper alloys, including brass, bronze, and high nickel content brass, as well as silver. The production process involves several key stages. First, there's a foundry where raw materials are melted and transformed into the desired alloy compositions. The hot rolling mill then processes these alloys into semi-finished products in various forms, such as sheets and strips, by subjecting them to high temperatures and pressure. After hot rolling, the materials are further refined in the cold rolling mill, resulting in precise dimensions, thicknesses, and surface qualities. Sivan Metal boasts a cutting-edge 550mm copper foil precision rolling machine, capable of producing copper foils with a thickness range spanning from 9 micrometers to 105 micrometers. In the realm of shielding, Ed Copper Foil surpasses raw copper foil due to its dimension. Sivan stands out with a remarkable production capacity, offering Ed Copper Foil with a maximum width of 1,290mm. Copper foil manufacturing, specifically in the form of 8 micron ed, electro deposited, copper foil, plays a pivotal role in the production of lithium ion batteries. This specialized copper foil stands out with its double shiny surface, a crucial factor in battery technology. What makes it so sought after are its unique attributes a symmetrical structure on both sides, metal density approaching the theoretical density of copper, remarkably low surface profile and exceptional elongation and tensile strength. The symmetrical structure ensures uniformity, which is critical for battery performance. Its high metal density contributes to efficient conductivity, while the low surface profile minimizes energy loss. Moreover, the copper foil's high elongation and tensile strength make it ideal for the demanding conditions within lithium-ion batteries, ensuring their reliability and longevity. The manufacturing process of nickel involves several stages. Nickel deposits are explored and, once identified, mined. Mining methods can vary, including open pit mining or underground mining. After extracting the ore, it is crushed and then sent to the concentrator, where it is further reduced in size. The resulting material is floated to separate the nickel sulfides and subsequently dried. The end product is an 18% concentrate of nickel, which is shipped to Deception Bay, a deep sea port located about 100 kilometers north of Raglan. The concentrated nickel ore is then subjected to high temperature smelting, typically in a furnace, where the ore is heated to around 1380 degrees Celsius. This process removes sulfur and other impurities, resulting in a material with a higher nickel content. Refining. After smelting, the nickel-rich material may still contain some impurities and other metals like iron or copper. Refining processes, such as solvent extraction or electrolysis, are employed to further purify the nickel. This stage aims to achieve a very high level of purity, often reaching 99.99%. The pure nickel is then used in a wide array of applications, including the production of stainless steel, various alloys, batteries, especially in electric vehicles, and electronics.
The ability of nickel to maintain its properties in extreme conditions and its unique electrical and magnetic properties make it a critical material in various industries.